what I'd like to do next is to say thanks to everybody who helped make this happen. And this was such a great success that we already, thank you Russ, have uh, initial funding to, to do next year's design challenge. Um, so I'm able to stand up here and not only talk about who won this year, but what we're gonna do next year. Um, so for the first time, I'd like to unveil the 2014-2015 design challenge. And the other thing I have to say is that I swear to you that we did not preload this either to Dr. Longo's talk or to our investor discussion. Um, but if you saw the way the Center on Longevity is organized, we have a, set, we have a, a direct um, division of MIND, we have a division of mobility and financial security. First year we did MIND, you had a pretty good guess where we might be going this year. So the quote for next year is, we're going to look for solutions that enable personal mobility across the lifespan. And why we're doing this um, is for many of the reasons that you heard today, that when we start talking about mobility, and to me, as you know, the director of mobility, it has a couple of meetings, meanings, but most of all, mobility means personal independence, it means self-determination, and it means quality of life. So I thought June's comments were great just now that we don't want to make this just how do we encourage wellness I think we want to make this, how do we encourage the ability of, of people to get around the world on their own for as long as possible? Um, so if I go back to some of our original design challenge goals, we said when we set out to, the, to do this, that we wanted to identify some potential solutions that we might see be able to make real impact in the world. So obviously what we just saw here means we did pretty well there and we hope to see that again. But we also said that even if that hadn't happened, if we went out to all the universities around the world, and we got all these young, talented designers having to learn just about what are the issues around aging, what are the parameters that you want to design to, that just educating that generation in, in aging-related things was going to be a success. So check, we, I think we have that one as well. And then finally, we, we wanted to make it not just about the design, but about the design plus the path to make impact. And so we are again gonna focus on those three areas for next year. Um, as we talk about empowering and enabling mobility, we think about that in a few different ways and I suspect we're probably gonna think about it in some ways that we haven't considered yet when I start to see solutions come in. Um, but we wanna look at it both from the perspective of how do we reduce sedentary lifestyles. So I'm hoping we see great, um, great suggestions around how do we start to crack that, um, that bit that says we all know it's good to move more but we aren't really moving the needle in the last uh, 25 years or so um, how do we encourage and enable exercise but then also how do we recognize that there are going to be some people out there for whom going and telling them to run 20 minutes a day is going to be impossible and we want to make sure that we also look at how we enable people to overcome barriers that they see in order to to remain mobile and to remain active so we want to. We're, we're, we know that once again we're going to make it a really hard judging process because we're likely to see a wide scope of of inputs. Um, but we think that it's important that we recognize that while we want to um, promote more exercise, more mobility, we want to recognize that there. We want to be inclusive, and there's a quality of life issue here for everybody.